Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of the William Bonney podcast. Uh, today I just wanted to start off the episode by um, by saying thank you uh, to all the people who have taken the time to subscribe, um, to all of you that take the time to, to comment and, and to push me on to make more videos. Um, I just want to say thank you to you guys. Um, obviously there's, there's some of you that follow me on Instagram as well um, and we chat on there. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for keep pushing me on and uh, you're the reason why I keep making these videos. You know, a lot of the long-term listeners and, and people who have listened for a little while now uh, know that I ran out of things to say uh, <laughs> many videos ago. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you very much for obviously pushing me on and, and you guys are the reason that I keep uh, coming up with, with new things to say about JLM. And that's really one of the reasons why um, I haven't made anything for a while is because I don't want to just keep churning stuff out, you know. Um, I could make reaction videos for days, but it's just not something I want to do yet. Um, I have been working on something new. Um, I'm going to push myself and say next week we're going to release the first episode of uh, a series I'm going to do. I think it's going to be about three episodes, maybe four. Um, they're going to be about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Um, and it's going to be complete fiction. All right. Maybe based on real life, based on real events, but it is going to be fiction. All right. So um, expect the next, the first episode of that to come out uh, next week. And, uh, and you can hold me to it as well. All right. So... Um, today, what I think thought I'd talk about, um, it's just off the top of my head, so you have to forgive me if I ramble a little bit or if um, you know it's not as uh, as well laid out as <laughs> some of my normal videos are. Um, but uh, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about making friends in prison. And I know it sounds a bit a bit fucking bent, but um, you know if you're going to be there for any amount of time, you need to make friends in prison. You need to get yourself out there, and uh, you know you need to get your face at least out from behind your door every now and then. Um, just for the simple fact it's going to do your mental health a world of good uh, but also you know it helps the time go so much faster if you can just sit and have a laugh with some pals um, I've got pals from prison that I'm still good friends with now and uh, and if it wasn't for some of those pals then my experience in prison would have been a lot worse all right I know I've spoken about it before but perversely some of the best times in my life have been in prison um, and it's down to the people it's not the place so yeah how to make friends in prison. My first bit of advice would be to uh, to get yourself down the gym. Um, one time in Exeter, uh, there was a lad come in. He was a premiership footballer. He was on loan from Stoke to Plymouth Argyle. Um, his name was Vincent Pericard. Um, you can look him up. He um, he got caught speeding and he uh, he said that his mum was driving. You know, he lied to the courts and things. And uh, yeah, he got caught out. So he ended up doing a few months with us. And he, he was too scared to leave the cell, which was a real shame because we wanted, as a premiership footballer, you know, we wanted him down the gym with us, <laughs> at least giving us a few tips and, uh, and tricks. But, you know, in his mind, it was a big, scary prison and, you know, he didn't he didn't want to come out from behind his door. So, you know, we only ever saw him for food and, and that was about it. But um, that's not a way that I would recommend you do your, you do your time. Uh, a lot of people are, are scared and uh, it's, it just seems like the easiest way to get away from it all. Um, it's just to hide behind your door. Don't come out for a soch. You know, only come out for food and and possibly work. But yeah, it's um, it's not a great existence. You might be safe, um, but you you you, you know your mental health is really going to suffer, and you and you're going to just do the the harshest time. Um, there's that old saying, isn't there, that you know boats are are safe in the harbour, but that's not what boats are designed for. Um, and human beings are the same. You know, you have a pretty shitty existence if you uh, you're stuck behind that door. So. Get yourself down the gym would be my uh, my first tip. Um, not only is this going to improve your state of mind, um, exercise always gets the endorphins flowing. Uh, you always feel better afterwards. Um, you know, you start to grow, you get bigger, putting on muscle, or you get smaller, losing fat, um, and it's just a way of getting you know getting yourself out and about. But from a friend's point of view, you know, if you can get involved in some team sports, you're going to start to get a few buddies, um, and if you're good at them, then you're going to start to get a bit of attention. Um, you know, so if you, you know, for example, I was quite good at volleyball. Um, I ended up on the prison volleyball team. <laughs> um, and there's a, you know, a little group of us, you know, five or six of us um, that, that used to be down the volleyball all the time. And, uh, you know, you get to know each other. You then go on to other prisons and you come back on other sentences and things. And, and those little hardcore mates that you had from football, volleyball, basketball, that sort of thing. Um, you'd be surprised how many people you see coming and going. Um the same old faces coming and going in prison, especially in Romandniks. <laughs> you, I could probably go back into Romandnik now and I haven't been there for 15 years and uh, I still see some of the same faces that have, you know, were there all throughout my time. 
Um, so yeah, that's my first recommendation. Get yourself down the gym, start playing some team sports and lean into the things that you're good at um, because you're going to find people that are, you know, of the same ilk as you. Um, the second one, it's it's this is maybe not a recommendation if you, you know, 100%, but um, gamble. Get yourself uh, gambling on the wing if you can because there'll be a bunch of hardcore gamblers um, and they will bet on anything and they'll gamble on anything. Um, and I was one of them. No, obviously only gamble what you can afford. Uh, what was the, what did they say? Uh, when the fun stops, stop. Um, yeah, don't don't gamble more than you can afford to because you're going to get yourself in trouble. But you know, if you can get yourself a little, uh, you know, a little football pools ticket, or we, we used to bet on the um, on the bonus ball on the lottery as well. So there'd be about seven of us, I think, and we'd all have uh, a line of numbers, and we'd all just put in half ounce of backy, and uh, whoever gets the bonus ball right got all of the backies um so yeah it's a good little way of uh, making friends because obviously you get to know the other boys in the group um like i say the football pools um they used to be any any wing in any jail in the country there's always at least one lad doing the football pools um and what i mean by this is you get to pick out the wins the lose and the draws and if you get it right then you uh then again you win all the all the stakes and stuff so um sometimes they'd roll over as well um, so, you know, especially with the bonus ball, no one would win it for a few weeks and then somebody would get all of them and it would uh, it would come in. <laughs> um, so, yeah, again, you can get yourself a good bunch of, uh, of lads um, together um, and you can have a laugh with the gambling. Now, I've seen on other videos um, there was a lad, I can't remember what his name is now. I'd love to I'll probably credit him in the in the in the, in the description or something. But, um, yeah, he does these videos and he was talking about how he used to be how he used to be the house um, and he'd set up a little blackjack. Uh, table now this would be I'd, I'd find this a little bit too much um because obviously gambling in that sense you've got to have enough to pay out the winnings um <laughs> but also you've got to take money quickly um off these people you can't have them running up too much of a debt but yeah he used to um he used to have an actual casino in prison and he'd be the house um my next tip uh for trying to make friends in prison um would just be yourself basically uh on the wing um, if you are trying to be something you're not, you will get found out quickly. Um, and even if it doesn't happen quickly, you will find yourself, you can't keep this facade up for months and years on end. So if you go in there acting like the tough guy, other tough guys are going to sniff you out very quickly. Um, if you go in there acting like some hard man and you can't back it up, um, then you're going to get found out very quickly. It's much better just to be yourself um, you'll naturally slot in with other people who are just like you because uh, there's a whole section of community in prison um, a cross section sorry um, I've seen people in there who have never committed a crime in their life they've accidentally committed a crime and they're in there for a couple of years now and I've seen people who are doing nothing but career criminals um, and they're all in there and there's everyone in between all right so just be yourself um, if you're a family guy and you just <laughs> just happen to find yourself in prison I can guarantee you'll start to slot in with a couple of other lads who are, who are family guys as well and you'll be fine. Um, you normally find yourself, uh, like I say, if you go to education or a workshop, um, you'll, you'll be in a class or a workshop with 10 other people. Um, get to know them. You know, you'll quickly find out who the bell ends are um, and you'll quickly find out who the sound lads are. And uh, as long as you, you know, hang around with the sound lads, um, you'll find yourself, again, time goes a lot quicker when you can sit and have a laugh a bit about it. My next tip, um, I should have numbered these really, because uh, I would love to say number five. Um, but no, my <laughs> sorry. Uh, my next tip um, would be to um, get to know your neighbours. Um, in prison, you have neighbours. You're basically in a bunch of cells, all piled on top of each other, um, and you're going to want to know who the people around you are. Uh, so get to know the people in the cells either side. You know, just do the neighbourly thing when you move into the cell. Just go, go and knock on the door. Hey, how you doing? Just moved in next door. What are you in for? <laughs> be confident. Be bold. Be brash. Um, this is your wing. These are your people. Um, you know, I, I used to say to my little brother when he came into prison um, that, that getting in prison is like driving on the motorway. You've got to get in and you've got to get on at 70 miles an hour. Um, if you try and bimble around at 20 or 30, you're just going to get chewed up. Um, so just be in there. You know, you're in prison. Why not make the most of it? So yeah, go and see your neighbours. Just go, yo, what's up? How are you? What are you in for? Um, I'm in next door. I'm in for this. You got any sugar? <laughs> That's normally how it goes. 
and uh, yeah, you'll start to make friends quickly. Um, also, it helps if you're not pissing people off as well. So uh, it helps if you know your neighbours uh, um, doesn't like loud music after nine o'clock because uh, then he won't be coming and kicking your head in first thing in the morning. The one person who I'm going to say is never your friend in prison uh, is the staff. And I'm sorry to all the prison officers who are listening. I know there's a few of them, um, but the uh, the staff are never your mates. All right. Um, as friendly as they'll act towards you um, and as nice as some of them may be, they are there to do a job um, and they're being nice to you. Maybe their way of uh, wheedling information out of you or trying to uh, you're trying to, you know, just find something out um, along the way. So, uh, yeah, just remember, be pleasant to the staff. You don't have to be a dickhead, um, but just remember the staff are never your friends. All right. Some of the people that it does benefit being friends with um, or anybody who's in a position of not influence, and I wouldn't even say power. I suppose it is power because they've got a little bit of control. Um, but anybody that you're going to need something from. Um, and these guys, uh, the guy, there's normally a dude on the, the wing who does haircuts. It's smart to be friends with them um, unless you want to end up looking like a yeti uh, for your sentence. <laughs> Um, the guy who's uh, a barber is normally, hopefully, someone who knows how to cut hair. Um, a lot of the time, though, it's just someone who, uh, there wasn't any jobs for a wing cleaner. Um, so they've given, given someone the clippers um, and they're having a go at cutting your hair. <laughs> they know four haircuts, you know, grade one, grade two, grade three and grade four. <laughs> um, but it's worth being friends with them because uh, sometimes they'll, uh, they always, they always used to be a guy who would charge tins of tuna um, for haircuts and, and unless you paid him, um, bearing in mind he's getting a wage from the prison as well, uh, but unless you paid him a tin of tuna, um, then you were always bottom of the list for a haircut. So yeah, it's worthwhile knowing and getting on with them. Um, the second guy you want to get involved with is the guy who does the laundry. Um, there'll normally be someone who does washing on your wing, um, and he'll be in charge of all the kit bags and, and washing. And again, it can be a pretty lonely experience if you don't know them, you know, when you're, when you're waiting for a week and a half for your washing to come back. Because uh, guys like me... Um, because I used to be gym orderly, so I would have a, a bit of a deal with the guy. Um, he did my washing, um, and I made sure he was always on the gym list. Uh, so, yeah, it's always worthwhile getting to know those guys and, and being friends with them. <laughs> um, the servery, the lads on the servery, it's always uh, advisable to be friendly with them. Um, if you want to end up with, uh, you know, not starvation rations, uh, they'll occasionally, you know, if you can be good pals with them, they'll occasionally uh, bring you food to your cell, um, you know, save you extra desserts, get you a bit of extra bread, something like that. Uh, but if you don't know them, um, then you're the one that's going to end up getting stitched up. So while they're giving their mates extra, they obviously have to claw that back uh, somehow. And uh, yeah, you can quickly end up being the guy who only gets three chips. <laughs> uh, the other guys to know would be the gym orderlies as well, like I said. Um, I thrived on uh, being a gym orderly because uh, everyone, gets, everyone, everyone wanted to be my pal um, because everyone wanted extra gym. Um, so yeah, I had uh, quite a good experience <laughs> in prison, um, just purely for the fact that uh, everyone wanted to be my mate. So yeah, like I say, making friends in prison, it's not essential, um, it's not absolutely necessary, but if you want to have you know a better time in prison, it's like, it's like work, isn't it? You know, if you've got a bunch of mates around you in work, uh, it can make that dreary task quite, quite enjoyable, and, and prison's the same, like I say. Some of the best times I have had in prison um, have been 100% created by the, the boys that I was around with. All right, so uh, again, thank you very much for listening today. Uh, thank you very much for pushing me on and supporting me and, uh, and making me do more videos. Uh, next week, hopefully, no, next week, 100% guaranteed, we'll have the first episode of my new uh, fiction story. We're going to call it Day Tripping. All right, there's a bit of a taster for you. It's going to be called Day Tripping be out next week and it'll be the first episode of a short series we're going to do that's going to be crime fiction um so yeah based on real events but there'll be a bit of extra added in there as well all right so uh, yeah like subscribe comment come and find me on uh, instagram it's william bonnie 838 and uh yeah see you all next time guys thank you bye, -bye.